Welcome everyone, my name is Nicole Scott and today we're going to be learning how to repair credit. to credit repair cloud now mind you you want to make sure once you've updated the credit report that you go into the smart credit report so you go to reports again and you go to the smart credit report and you head over to this little refresh button right here because it says your credit report was last updated in February so we're gonna update this right here update now you want to make sure that you completely refresh all of the data that you are working on with this client and what do you know here's um, you know some results 80 points that's huge right congratulations now this is for from a few months ago but those are still results so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a screenshot so we can share these results on social media and other places where people can actually see the work that we've done in the past and we're just gonna put uh, I'll put sample results okay always save your results so that way you can show people hey these are some of the results that I've gotten for people um, you can also get video testimonials from your clients that you're helping but you definitely want to document the, the 
progress that you're making with people. So now everything is completely updated. It's refreshed. It's as of today. So there we have it. So we're going to head on over into Credit Repair Cloud and we're going to re-import the credit report. Click on re-import. Now, once you upload the client's uh, smart credit report with their username and password, uh, that information does save into Credit Repair Cloud, so you do not have to enter it next time that you log in. I always just copy and paste. Um, if you're not good at copying and pasting, you can literally just, um, you know, type it over from, you know, one screen to another. But um, you can copy and paste the username and the password into smartcredit.com's uh, website when you can log in and actually review the credit report. Now, lately, Credit Repair Cloud, when you're importing uh, credit reports, it does take a while. So don't flip out. Don't try to rush the process and, um, you know, just be patient. That's my best advice to you. So here we have it. Um, this is the re-import summary from Credit Repair Cloud. So this is going to give you an overview that you can send to your clients that you can actually email them. I prefer to email all of our clients because again, you want to set up your systems and processes from the beginning. Um, and I am not a huge fan of Credit Repair Cloud's messaging system. So we have an email support box that we have all of our clients email us to and they can communicate with us within the email, similar to like Credit Repair Cloud, okay? Credit Repair Cloud, you can't really call them, you have to email them. We um, are not always available for phone calls either, so we prompt all of our clients to email us so that way we can uh, help them. So let's take a look at some of the changes. You'll see that the credit score went up a little bit, not too much, it went up with Experian into the 700s, but with Equifax and TransUnion, they're being a little stubborn. We did see 32 items deleted and three added. So <clears throat> again, we always wanna make sure that we go through these and understand what this report is saying because sometimes it's not always correct. Um, but just understand that you wanna you know, look at it and uh, try to get an idea of what's going on. So we have a new item, looks like they applied for something which is positive, that's great because you need to add positive items as we're removing negatives. We got an inquiry removed, um, another inquiry. So it looks like there was just a ton of inquiries removed from this credit profile. So here we go, um, another inquiry, another inquiry, 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 what's this? Not sure why that was deleted, but we'll see. We got this charged off account deleted, LVN funding deleted, CB Indigo deleted. Um, ooh, another collection. Always download this report as a PDF. And then when we're done, we're actually gonna upload this same PDF to the client's internal notes so we can have it saved because one thing that you need to realize is you have one opportunity to download this report so you can have a copy of it but you also need to document it so you need to keep it in the internal notes anytime you do anything with the client document it inside of the internal notes okay have your systems and processes in place <clears throat> before you just jump into repairing credit now Keep in mind, I probably jumped into Credit Repair Cloud faster than most because my background is in business operations. I've been an operations manager for the last 20 years. So I am very custom to systems and processes. But if you're not, you definitely need to sign up for one of my coaching sessions. So that way we can work together on setting up your credit repair cloud. And typically it's gonna take about four sessions for you to really get the grasp of it and have a smooth operating machine, okay? So let's go ahead and hit continue to the credit report so that way we can dispute the items that we need to. And again, first line of business is always personal info, okay? Personal info get that cleaned up and then we can move on. 
So the client really doesn't have a whole lot of inquiries left on the credit profile, which is great. They don't have any inquiries with TransUnion. <clears throat> they only have one inquiry with Equifax and they only have um, three inquiries with Experian. Now, if they don't have accounts with some of these inquiries, we can still dispute them, okay? Because, you know, if there's no account, there's no proof. So first account here that I see that is popping up as red. And of course, when this pops up as red, it just means that there is an error, but you need to read it because sometimes it's not always an error. It's, it's, it's a computer error. Like it, a lot of times when people self-report their utilities, they'll come up as a negative when in fact you just need to change it. So always understand how to read it. Um, don't just go off what the software says because software is meant to help automate the process, but you still need to understand what you're doing and how to read it because sometimes there are mistakes, okay? So we're just reading this is uh, zero balance owed, which is great. It's a derogatory account. So that's a keyword that we want to look for. And we want to get this off of the credit profile. So one of the things that I use is account data is listed fraudulently. So we can put account data is listed um, fraudulently. Um, I can't spell that. Hold on a second. Account data listed is fraudulent, see proof. And we can send a copy of the, a screenshot of the credit report because the data last activity is wrong across the board. They're all different dates. Um, the date that it's opened is, you know, the same on two bureaus, but there is some con contradicting information that is listed on the credit report. Now you'll see here that we, it did say that we disputed it in the past and there is a reinvestigation in progress um, in regards to the credit limit. So we'll see what happens, but it does not look <clears throat> like they are actively reporting it. So there are some differences between, you know, accounts that charged off that are not actively reporting and then accounts that are derogatory that are actively reporting as a derogatory account every single month which are literally killing your guys's credit scores and those are the most important accounts now um, you'll see here the data last activity is um the last one is 2019 and then other other bureaus are reporting in 2018 so that tells me that this is not actively reporting so it should be easier to get off so let's go ahead and say this account is inaccurate. I'm seeking litigation. I demand you delete it immediately. Again, this is like round two. Actually, this is round three for this client. So this is actually round three for this client. But again, a lot of the things that we send in round two, we're just continuing to challenge them in round three. So that way they can remove it. So we've got some positive stuff going on here. I'm so excited for this client. Since they started working with me, they were able to get a new car um, looks like SIG Financial was able to finance them about $20,000 and that's where we got one of our new inquiries from, I believe it was. Um, but that's awesome. They, they got uh, a new vehicle, so that's exciting because when I first started working with them, they really didn't have anything on their credit um, but negative derogatory things. So this is great. We got an auto. Um, We've got another <clears throat> auto. So there's two autos here now. And that one um, is from 2022 as well. So that's great. Um, this is an old account. What do we got here? We've got another auto. So they were actually able to add three autos in 2022. So this is really, really exciting. Um, and here it is. Here's another auto loan that they got in 2022. So now we're on four auto loans that this client was able to get now. Um, so that is really exciting. This um, client actually has a rental business located in Las Vegas, Nevada. So now they're able to leverage their personal credit to buy better items for their business. And it's just going to continue to get better. But of course, we need to add some credit cards because you want to keep your mixture of accounts um, pretty good. So this this account that's in red is only reporting to TransUnion. 
it's derogatory. So that's probably why TransUnion credit score is so low. So let's go ahead and say, um, same thing. Account data listed is fraudulent. We're not saying we've been a victim of identity theft. We're saying the account that the account data that's listed is fraudulent. It's not my job to tell you what's right and what's wrong. It's your job to prove it or remove it. So there we are, we're challenging you, okay? This account is inaccurate, I'm seeking litigation, remove it, okay? Same thing with these ones, and here we are. We're gonna say the same thing. We're not saying identity theft because this client doesn't really know if it's identity theft or not. They're like, hey, it could be mine, it could not be mine, but we never wanna say that it's identity theft if it's not. There's a way to say things without saying them um, that would that are going to work. And you can also use the law, right? Using the law is also going to help you um, get these accounts off. And I have an ebook that actually covers some major points in the consumer um, law, which is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And, you know, there's some other laws out there that you can actually use to your advantage. And I will leave the link for that below so you guys can include some of those verbiages within your custom dispute letters. Because if you've watched any of my other videos, and as a matter of fact, stop, stop, stop. If you have not liked this video by now, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Make sure that you've subscribed if you haven't subscribed already and leave me a comment and let me know if you have found value from this video because I do these videos so I can help train you guys and of course I don't get paid for these videos so I do it out of the kindness of my heart to be able to help you guys and make sure you are doing the right thing for people and of course becoming the best credit hero that you can possibly be okay and I'm here to coach you guys along the way my name is credit coach Nicole Scott Follow me on Instagram. Um, my Facebook was hacked recently, and I'm gonna do a video about that and show you guys how it was hacked. So right now, I'm just saying, follow me on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but Credit Coach Nicole Scott got monetized for Instagram Reels. So head over to Instagram and follow me at Credit Coach Nicole Scott. Okay, so um, same thing with this one, account data listed is fraudulent please uh, delete so you might you might notice I just changed the verbiage slightly right it still means the same thing but you want to just kind of change <clears throat> the way that you're saying things because a lot of times when um, you are you know doing these dispute letters we're dealing with a computer system which is called the e-oscar system and you're up against a computer system so what i do is i hand write notes on all of my letters i reformat my letters i use custom letters and guess what we get results if you haven't by now go to my instagram and see all the results that i get from my clients okay there are no games being played over here okay so um, those are all of the derogatory accounts. We've got rent, uh, Rental Karma, which is adding the resident. Uh, we've got this other trade line. There's no issues there. So there's no reason to dispute things that don't have any negatives. So let's go ahead and save your work. So if you save your work, you can continue to the wizard or you can show all of your items. Now, there's nothing that I want to change. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save and continue to the letter uh, wizard, which is where we can actually generate all of our letters that are gonna be going to the creditors and the credit bureau. So this is a really important step. Now, mind you, if you are using the free version of Credit Repair Cloud, you are not gonna have access to Credit Repair Cloud's letter library, but you can import your own custom letters. So if you have not already, head to the link in the description where you can purchase our letter library. It's only $99 right now and there is a ton, hundreds of letters that are already pre-formatted for Credit Repair Cloud that are all custom and you can even head over to spinbot.com and you can spin them a little bit or reword them if you will and make them e like custom, totally custom to your business, okay? You can just say different words that mean the same thing, okay? Use trigger words that 
are going to get to a human being versus a computer system okay um and then i use my own custom reasons and instructions of course i don't use anything that's already pre-formatted in credit repair cloud because if you're using it think of the other thousands and millions of people that are using it as well that are sending letters to the credit bureaus every day okay so just keep that in mind we're going to hit round two or higher and a lot of people go always ask me why do you always select round two well for number one this is actually a round three um video but the reason why i always select round two or higher is because i want to be able to select the custom letter from my custom letter library inside of credit repair cloud okay so that's how you're able to select custom letters is by selecting round two where you can have access to all of your different creditor letters collection letters all credit bureaus all that stuff so first line of business is disputing with the credit bureaus and then second line of business is disputing with the creditor or the furnisher who's reporting the information so let's start with the credit bureau first okay and if you've watched any of my other videos you guys already know i am a firm believer in disputing with both credit bureau and the creditor or furnisher who is reporting that item to the credit bureau okay and that could be like the collection company or whoever um, so let's click on step two where we're going to add the pending items okay and everything that is in orange we have already disputed so there's a lot of things that are on here that are just not really updated so you don't need to worry about anything that's in orange because all of this stuff has been has already disputed the only thing that i would say when you're dealing with a client that still has a bunch of inquiries all of the inquiries that you still are trying to get removed from the client's file will need to be manually added but they will be in orange so what you have to do is you have to have smart credit open at the same time now since i know this client most of their inquiries have already been removed i'm not going to worry about that right now but i'm just telling you guys in the future if you notice your credit profile still has the inquiries or your client's credit profile still has a bunch of inquiries all of the inquiries round two and beyond are going to be listed in orange as they are currently under dispute but obviously they are still on the credit report so you're going to need to just select them and add them they're not going to be in red because you didn't just select it and put a reason instruction you've already disputed it it just doesn't quite calculate it so you have to select it to add it okay um let's select this red account and i always kind of group together the different accounts so account data listed is fraudulent we can add all of those type of accounts to the same letter and we can add personal information to that letter so since we've got so many things deleted from the last round we only have these items left for this client that we're working on so that's pretty good you know we only have four accounts that are still reporting and um you know the address the uh, the personal information is updated we're just trying to get the rest of these addresses off of the profile so we're going to hit save and continue and we're going to go down to step three we're going to choose credit bureau letter and in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a prove it letter hey this after the investigation this is the prove it letter so let's go ahead and Go over here and then i always reformat this stuff because i don't want to make it seem like it's coming from credit repair cloud so <clears throat> and i just want to go ahead and give you one last reminder of the following laws that you are required to follow you 15 usc code 1681e compliance procedures 15 usc code 1681o civil liability for neglect non-compliance 15 USC code 1681N, civil, li civil liability for willful non-compliance, okay? So this goes on to say, hey, I am requesting that per the FCRA 15, I'm sorry, 15 USC code 1681I, which is the FCRA uh, area of 611, where it's the reinvestigation, we are asking for you to reinvestigate the procedure in case of disputed accuracy and delete the inaccuracies okay and this goes on to the fair credit reporting act um, right here where it tells you 
all that good stuff. So these are all in the letters, all this kind of stuff, right? Because this is what gets things deleted, okay? So let's head over to Experian. Let's do the same thing. Let's just kind of reformat it a little bit so it doesn't look like it's coming from Credit Repair Cloud. And if you guys have watched my other video about TransUnion, I'll drop that video down in the comments and you can probably see it on one of our other playlists coming up soon. Um, it is about how TransUnion has been responding to, uh, with these dispute letters to clients and it's super frustrating. So when you are doing letters that are going to TransUnion, you need to reformat them so they look like they are not coming from Credit Repair Cloud. And yes, it takes a little bit of extra time, but there's no point in sending a letter that they're just going to flat out deny and say, oh, this is a Credit Repair Cloud company or this is from a credit repair person. No, we want to be different. We want to be unique. We want to send custom letters. We want to reformat the way that the letters look so that way uh, they're not cookie cutter letters. Now, now that's all custom, right? Because it's all something that, you know, someone could have did in like Microsoft Word or whatever the case. So we're going to save this for later. And this is actually going to be round three. And this is going to be prove it. Okay, and this can just be like a general letter. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back. Now, before we clear any of the accounts out, you can tell what an account is and what a not an account is because if you don't have an account number, it's not an account. It's either personal information or inquiry. Okay, but all of these have account numbers so now we're going to send, instead of the credit bureau, we're actually going to send the creditor or the the do is actually send dispute letters to the creditors and the data furnishers that are actually reporting this. So you'll see that all of these addresses are actually saved in uh, our system. So one thing that you guys can do is get the addresses directly on from the credit report. So what i'm going to do really quickly is just grab the login credentials for the credit monitoring and log in real fast so that way we can just verify that the addresses that we're using are actually accurate because one thing that's super frustrating is when we get returned mail because it doesn't go to the correct address which happens frequently so um sometimes you know it just happens so let's scroll to the bottom of the credit report so that way we can um see these addresses and what i'm gonna do you can also google them just to be on the safe side like if you're like oh, i'm not sure if that address is accurate you can definitely google an address to make sure is what you need okay so let's head over to generate letters in tab three we've got things side by side now since we left we're gonna have to re-add those items so we're gonna hit uh, creditor furniture add pending items and we're just gonna add those items now you can see that they say that they're already under dispute because we've already sent a letter to the credit bureau but um, now we're gonna send it to the creditor that's actually reporting it. So let's go ahead and just verify. So we got T-Boom. Okay, that one um, has slightly different. So let's do 4499. Let's change that just because that's the one that's on the credit report. And then I'm gonna save it. And then we have Spring Oak. That one is correct. LVN Funding, that's a very popular one. Uh, this one, LVN Funding, that is not LVN Funding. So this is saying um, LVN is for the, that's actually the original creditor. So we're gonna change that.
Okay, so dis to dispute. <laughs> validation letter so that way we can tell them hey we are this account is disputed and denied okay so um that will automatically populate a letter for each of these places so that way they can get a copy of our dispute so we're going to save that for later and we're just going to sit round three and this is going to be creditor letters you can just put like a debt validation letter that's fine it can be general creditor I have creditor so I'm gonna put that I'm gonna save all those letters we're gonna hit our back button and I'm gonna clear all of these accounts off of the credit because I've already sent them in okay um, now I believe that's everything that we had to do for this client so everything is now in dispute and again, if we look at their credit report, it's it's going to actually be able to prove to us that we only have a few accounts left. Like on the credit report, there's only four inquiries left, three are with Experian, and we can even get rid of some of those inquiries because there was no approval with um, America's First or uh, now.com. So let's go ahead and actually dispute the inquiries that are still left on here, just so we can get those out of there as well. And we're gonna do this one, this one, and then I don't believe there was approvals for this one or this one because they don't have an account with them. Now, if a client did have an account uh, with these inquiries, then we would not want to dispute them. The only time we want to dispute it is when there is not an account opened with that credit place. So um, I don't believe that there is going to be an open account with these particular places. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and add those. And we can verify that those accounts that we did add to the round three are the only accounts that are left. And we're going to select uh, credit bureau letters. And this is just going to be like a little inquiry, um, inquiry buster letter, as many people might call it. So I'll just put, there we go, generate the letter. And then I like to just, again, change it because I don't want it to seem like it's coming from Credit Repair Cloud, you know? So I'd be, I uh, reformat all of the letters so we are different, okay? Because you got to stand out. You got to be different. How are you going to get results? You got to be unique. You got to think outside of the box. You can do crazy things like staple your letters. That's what I do. So I, I can ensure they, hey, they got this packet. It included everything. What? Because sometimes we'll say we'll get responses back that don't say anything, right? That just say, "Oh, we got something from you, but we didn't get uh, anything else from you." It's like, how did you not? You got a letter, but you didn't get any proof documents. Like we sent those all together. So I started stapling all of my letters together, and we'll see how that goes. 
So now all this is done, we can go back. I don't dispute inquiries with the creditor unless um, I have to. And at this point, it doesn't seem like we really have to because they're not given too much pushback. We only have a few inquiries left. But let's go ahead and head over to the dashboard because now, um, you know, we need to send some updates to the client. So this is a good thing. Like the client started with us back in uh february of 2022 and then they were able to actually get autos like a month later and now their credit is in a whole lot better of a position so now from um let's see from february they started at a 542 they're now um at a 601 they started at a 626 they're now at a 720 they started at 510, they're now at a 590. So they are definitely getting there. And I always like to just give the clients an update as far as like, hey, this is where you're started, this is where you're at, because some people just don't know, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot of that and I'm actually gonna start preparing it in an email for the client. So we'll go ahead and just put that in there. We're going to attach um, the update. And again, there's the update. So we're gonna just give the client a quick update. Hey, here's some things that have changed since we updated your credit profile. But before we do that, we wanna go into the internal notes and we wanna upload the latest updates for the client. So um, I'm just gonna put re-import summary and we're gonna attach that and we're gonna put that, save that in here because now you have it saved. If you don't save it in here, you're going to lose it. If you don't have a good system, you're not gonna be able to be organized, which is never going to work. So again, guys, if you found value in today's video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. So again, guys, thank you for watching today. My name is Credit Coach Nicole Scott. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment on my videos, and follow me over on Instagram at Credit Coach Nicole Scott where I drop daily reels so you can get entertained because I'm telling you guys, we have some great content coming out. So you definitely want to stay tuned. We're always dropping fire videos to give you the latest and greatest and to help you become the credit heroes that you have burning inside you. So again, guys, if you found value in today's video, make sure that you drop a comment and let me know what you found most valuable about.